Jackson County. This is the Southern Oregon Regional Pilot Program meeting um, to talk about the Governor's Executive Order um, 1207. Um, and so we have an agenda. We're just going to kind of go through this agenda. Um, so the first thing on the agenda is introductions. So if we could just go around the room, this is the Southern Oregon Regional Pilot Program Technical Advisory Committee that the board has appointed. And so if we could just go around the room and introduce ourselves. I'm Sherman Lamb, LCDC Commission. Janelle Stratner, Oregon Department of Transportation. Dan O'Connor, Real Estate and Land Use Attorney. Bill Levins, Property Owner and Aggregate Representative. Greg Holmes, 1000 Prince Oregon. Joshua Bombard, Southern Oregon representative for the Department of Land Conservation and Development. Joe McKenzie, I'm with Oregon Opportunities Real Estate. I specialize in rural farm and ranch land listings, and I'm also a Jackson County Planning Commission. And I'm Craig Anderson, I'm with Jackson County uh, hmm? Development Services Department. We have a couple people on the, on the phone. Who's on the phone? I'm Catherine Daniels, PLCD. Okay. Uh, this is Steve Evelyn. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Steve. Uh, Okay, Steve Nemo with the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. And this is, this is Jim Johnson, Oregon Department of Agriculture. Okay. Okay, thank you. Patty, did you get that? Patty's taking notes. <laughs> She's taking notes. Okay. I'm going to the recorder. Okay, so the next item on the agenda is the progress report and update on the Southern Oregon Regional Pilot Program. Um, we have two items, two maps that we're going to go over today. Um, one is the regional, the regional approach map that we've worked with Douglas County and Josephine County. Remember, it's a three-county project, um, at least at this point. Um, and we have worked on, the three counties have worked on this regional approach. Um, which and we'll show you the criteria that we used in this regional approach and the maps, the map associated with it. And then we also have a map showing we did some more work on the mapping errors exercise that Jackson County is <coughs> able to do under this grant. Um, and we did more work on that. Um, and we have that map as well. Um, and so I'd like to just kind of, this is in response to us needing to do uh, for the grant application. We have two tasks that Jackson County is working on, task five, which is the regional approach and the regional report. And then task six, which is the mapping error exercise that's associated with um, one of the maps that we have. So Craig is going to go through the criteria that was used for both um, the regional approach and um, the mapping errors exercise. I do want to let you know that um, Douglas County has produced maps um, using the regional approach, as has Josephine County. Douglas County has already had their hearing, their public hearing on this. Josephine County and J Jackson County haven't had their public hearing on this yet, um, but I wanted to bring this before the Technical Advisory Committee to get some feedback before we even went to the Planning Commission to have a public, kind of a public meeting where the public could come testify, um, to get some feedback. And so that's kind of what this meeting is really designed for and about. So is this a government meeting here, or is this a nonprofit meeting, or is it a combined? Because I notice there's a lot of government officials here and nonprofit, and it happens to be a client set on both boards uh, as a county representative and a nonprofit representative under the uh, under the laws of the Constitution. That you can't mix nonprofits with uh, government or mix their funding. It's called. Uh, uh, where it's called mingling uh, government dollars with private dollars. That's a crime. Right. right. It's a very I serious crime. I don't think that's an issue here. Um, the representatives that are sitting on this technical advisory committee are not using any resources. They're all doing this for 
Well, they can't sit on the board because that's called in kind, in kind uh, 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 things. Whether they get elected for voting, if you're a county employee, you can't be on another board, uh, a, a government board, because see, you're setting policy. And if you're an employee, you but, can't set but we're policy. Not, we're not, but we're not setting policy here. We're not setting policy. So I would say that this group is actually operating legally. And we're going to just continue. Can you show me the statute? All right. Hey, you know, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just a nonprofit. I mean, you can voice your opinion, write a letter, but I'm not going to sit here for two hours and just go back and forth about the legality of this group. And I agree. <clears throat> okay, this is a, not an order. Oh, so you're, it is a government. Well, uh, we're trying you, to get charge, sir? Are no, you I'm not in charge? It's, no. my, it's, it's my private opinion. I'm a volunteer. I come here at my own. And you're also a government, a government I'm not a government employee. I'm know, a private I, volunteer. Well, you you just said you were the head of the planning department. I didn't, I didn't say no. I was the head of the planning department. I said I'm a member of the Jackson County Planning Commission. And it would be helpful if some of you folks would understand that the planning department is different than the planning commission. Oh, the planning is. commission, yes, is an appointed commission to review land use issues on behalf of the board, board of commissioners and the county citizens at large. Okay. And we, we aren't paid and we do it at our own expense. It's volunteer work and it's on the benefit and behalf of the citizens of the county. Taking people's property rights is a way to benefit it from the property. I don't know about others, but I'm a very conservative private property rights individual, and I have made every attempt through the past seven plus years to protect private property rights. The you know, the banking industry is showing it. You're all about you're all about taking real estate and property rights from everybody. <coughs> And yeah, I've got sir, a sir, zillion let's, files let's, on so, so, I, so to okay. show that they're acting out of uh, out of uh, improperly by getting government dollars and mixing their government dollars with their private dollars, and that's what I object to. Is so ready being uh, the modern fasc the face of fascism with uh, getting um, government dollars and government approval to do anything on your land. And uh, they don't they don't seem to protect the property owner at all. They go after guys with water rights, uh, they own water rights that say they don't own the water rights. That they go, the government owns the rainwater. Well, uh, then you can turn around and give grants to put. Can we take a breath? You're entitled your opinion, but you're not entitled to this problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, your time has nothing to do with the meeting. Right. So, so let's move forward. So, Craig. Okay. So. There's been a lot of work that's happened to lead us up to this point, and since probably most of the people in this room are not familiar with the work that's been done, primarily up to this point, we're looking at uh, what's called GIS, Geographical Information Systems. It's, it's uh, an electronic way to break the county up into zones and various um, ways of analyzing land in the county, including, like I said, the zones, tax lots, whether it's uh, got uh, the, the type of soils that is included on, on all the land in the county, whether it's within a uh, protected area for deer and elk, winter range, and all these various factors have played a role in developing these maps. And so we've, we've been working with with um, that data for over a year and a half, two years now, and it's led us to this uh, to this stage. So, like Kelly said, there's two different approaches we're considering. One is a regional approach, which uses slightly different uh, mapping criteria, and then the other is an approach that looks at uh, land that's currently designated as resource land, which <coughs> the majority of resource land is considered uh, protected under either Goal 3, which protects agricultural land. In, in Jackson County, agricultural land is zoned EFQ. Uh, please let me just get this presentation. Um, so agricultural land protected through statewide planning Goal 3 is zoned exclusive farm use in, in Jackson County. And then forest land is protected under Goal 4. And that in Jackson County is on either forest resource, woodland reserve, woodland resource, or uh, open space reserve. 
So um, the land that's within those zoning districts in Jackson County is considered resource land. The, um, the approach that we've taken is to look at all of the resource land that's privately owned, that's outside of urbanized areas, so outside of urban growth, uh, either city limits, urban growth boundaries, or urban reserves. And so the, the balance of the land in the county that's, that's zoned resource, we looked at every single tax lot in the county to, to determine whether it's possibly miszoned as resource land and it should be some other zone that would potentially allow development that's not allowed under the statewide planning rules. So again, these two maps are a way to display that Analysis. Please let me get through this. Uh, yeah. And then you can ask everybody. The purpose of this meeting is to actually inform this technical advisory committee of the county's progress. So that's the purpose of our meeting today. Well, you're forgetting one stakeholder, though the mineral, the miners, the mineral estate of 1872. Right. It's, it is the dominant state over all Sir, estates. Let him and finish this. Uh, I'm going to represent my mining industry okay, so in, involved in this. I want to talk about the um, the characteristics of both of these. Um, and you got mapping. a new geologist around here? Because a new geologist for the mineral estate <coughs> to, to show you the lands of the mineral estate that may have been uh, Sir, mis, uh, done with as all due not respect, minerals. Like I said, what this meeting is for is to inform this technical advisory committee of what we're doing here. If, if you have an issue, we can certainly talk about it after the meeting. That's a good way to shut them up. Yeah. Well, I've been intimately involved in being railroaded for the last 12 and a half years, being the property owner of the one <coughs> whose rainwater was taken away from me. And I can recognize a railroad job when I see one. Have fun. Thank you, Gary. Okay, again, this people might be um, misinformed as to what the, the objective of this exercise is, which is basically give more rights, potentially allow development that's not allowed under current law. So, if anything, people that own resource land stand to gain from this exercise, uh, rather than the other way around. So we're looking again at resource land that is potentially miszoned as resource land and can be removed from the protections of Goal 3 and 4. And so again, the, uh, the methodology that we use for both of these maps is that the uh, the properties that are potentially included as uh, potential non-resource lands do not contain, contain class one through four soils. At least the majority of the tax lot is not class one through four soils. The majority of the tax lot has a forest productivity value of under 50 cubic feet per acre per year, and that's for Douglas fir. And the majority of the tax lot is outside of deer and elk winter range units. So that applies to both maps. For the, for the uh, regional approach, which is the map on the right here, and the map up on the screen that I can move around, people want to see different areas. Um, it requires that any candidate lands be within three miles of a rural community. or um, an urban growth boundary. So in, in Jackson County, we've got um, rural communities are Prospect, Lake Creek, and, and there's, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't list them out here, but, but um, if it's within three miles of an existing urban growth boundary or a rural community, it's potentially included. And the different rings that you see, you see three color rings, the, the red ring represents one mile, 
from a rural community or urban growth boundary. The yellow ring represents two miles and the blue is three miles. Excuse me. I have just one quick question. You were talking about the rezoning so things can be changed. What if we as property owners don't want things changed? Right. We don't want a monument. No. If we want this has nothing to do with a monument. So there's no there's no monument that's associated with this exercise at all. We are happy with no extra regulations. This would actually reduce regulations. More oppression. That's a possibility too. Well, all right now, this project is just a mapping exercise. It's just a mapping exercise. It hasn't done anything to change any land zoning. Hasn't done anything to um, affect any land use whatsoever. That's why we're here. This is just a mapping. This is just a mapping exercise. So, so I mean, you're here for no reason. No, I don't know if you understand what you're saying. So no, let me. Would we'll need to uh, potentially change the comprehensive plan designation, which would allow somebody, if they wanted to in the future, change their designation from from a resource zone like farmer forest to residential. But it would be up to that property owner to do that. It would just change more of the overarching, that umbrella designation to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you'd have, a cho you'd have more of a choice. I own 270 acres, me and my brother. They made this property a national monument. This is just a taste of the regulations they stuck on it. We right. don't this, want that. We but this doesn't, freedom, this, this doesn't have anything to do with the monument. So, so just to be clear for everyone who's here, this has, nothing to, this has nothing to do with making anything a national monument or putting anything changing anything to uh, federal lands designation, this doesn't have anything to do with that. It's not the starting process of? No. no. The reason here is we're nope. trying to break away from the overarching requirements of legislated state land use law and give ourselves down here more autonomy and authority to do what private property owners want to do with their lands. Okay. You won't be obligated to do anything. The idea is, is to have more allowance to do something if you want to change the zoning on your land. And this is a process to try to determine what lands fit into a category that the state would accept to allow for that and give us more ability to have more local land use control over what we have down here. And that's the reason I'm here, because it's very important to me that private property owners are able to do what they ought to be able to do on their property. Okay. Thank you. That's what we're for. OK, so moving on. I described these three rings and the distance, they represent different distance from either an urban growth boundary or a rural community. Um, the distances would be uh, after we go through a, a carrying capacity analysis, so we're, we're at just a very rough draft phase of looking at properties that have these characteristics, but um, if those properties were able to pass the tests for um, the carrying capacity, which is a different stage of this uh, process, then those different rings would be associated with different densities that would be allowed. So those uh, properties within a mile of the urban growth boundaries or uh, rural communities would be potential, potentially eligible for a, um, uh, one unit per 10 acres or 10 acre density. Um, those within two miles would be one per 20. And those within three miles would be one per 40. So using that, <coughs> using that uh, approach, this map would result in 497 tax lots. So all of the, um, the blue, red, and yellow um, square polygons or, or figures on, on that map are different tax lots. So there are a total of um, nearly 500 of those lots that are eligible at this point 
using the, the methodology that I just described. And that represents close to 10,000 acres, under 10,000 acres. Of those properties, and considering that many of those are already developed, and then also considering the density that would be allowed, um, there is a maximum potential of 573 new tax lots. So that's, if you were an owner of one of those red, yellow, or blue tax lots, you would be able to divide. Um, and if so, adding up all of the potential divisions, <coughs> 573 new lots could be potentially created. So this, this approach um, requires that the county adopt a new zoning district and a new comprehensive plan designation. And so that would require supported findings and policies to be adopted. And also it would mean that our existing rural use zone, which is the way the county currently allows property owners to go from resource to non-resource, um, that zone would, would be eliminated. Also, if this was adopted, there would be no way in the future for property owners who don't qualify through this analysis to qualify at some future point. So contrast that with our rural use zone, which would, um, I'll go through that in a, in a minute, but that's one um, potentially disadvantage of using this approach is that once we've, once we've determined which properties are eligible, there's not really a procedure for people in the future. <coughs> They're not eligible on this map to, to, um, to go through this. Okay, so. Hey, Craig, can I ask a question sure. about that? Just so, I mean, I understand you're saying, so on this map, you either qualify or you don't based on the mapping. Yes. But if you qualify, say you're outside of the three mile, and you qualified for RU anyway under different circumstances, you would still be able to go through that process, right? Well, I don't think we'd be able to keep both our rural use zoning district and this approach. I don't like the sound of that at all. Mm -hmm. Why Why wouldn't you be able to keep them both? Well, it wouldn't make sense that we would have two different ways to get to non-resource. In my opinion, any property that could qualify for RU should be included in this automatically then. And you've got to go back and add those in. And and just for full disclosure, I own property that qualifies for RU zoning, but I'm not included in this. But I do have an option to pursue RU zoning right. currently. And if we took that zone away, that option would go away. That would be a detriment to the future value of my land potential value for my land just like it would for anybody else. So that's something that I think we need to be really careful about and a determination about okay. that is really expanding or broadening what this has been boiled down to so far, mm -hmm. if that's the case. I think that weighs heavily on it moving we'll forward in that direction. Okay. Craig, do you know you gave the number of additional properties that would qualify? Do you know how many do you know what the maximum quantity would would Qualify into the RU and how yeah, what um, the balance difference would be, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get to that. Um, so, this is the this is the rural <coughs> use map um, using essentially um, using our rural use criteria without doing a more refined analysis that's required. If you, if you wanted to get to rural use, you'd have to refine it more than this. But this is looking at, a, like I said, kind of a broad brush approach um, to what would qualify as resource or non-resource. Um, again, the, the, the majority of the tax lot area is not class one through four soil. It's of a forest productivity value of less than 50 cubic feet per acre per year. And it's outside of deer and elk winter range units. So um, in addition to that, the lots that are shown on this map are at least 10 acres in size. And um, I, did, I did exclude lots that are within a floodway. So I did take, take those lots out. 
Um, so the density, rather, rather than the other approach, which uses these rings outside of an urban growth boundary or rural community, um, the density would be um, based on what's in our comprehensive plan, which is generally the, looking at the surrounding properties and, and doing a, a more refined analysis to determine you know, how, how the lot size would compare to surrounding property lot sizes. So our current rural use uh, zoning district allows for three different densities, either a 40 acre, a 30, a 30 acre, or 20 acre. And so you can get to those different densities based on what the surrounding lot size is, the, the average lots within a half mile to a mile of that property. And so that's a different approach than the previous one. Uh, we went down to consider a, a 10 acre lot size on this because that's something that um, that the board, our board wishes to pursue potentially is to rather than have a 20 acre minimum lot size for rural use potentially have a 10 acre. So I included lots that are down to 10 acres in this. And so looking at all the lots, um, so okay, can I ask you yeah. a question about that? Would that would you eliminate the um, the cost rate provision that's in there right now? Because currently you can go down below the twenty if you cluster. You can go down to fifteen. So that would be eliminated though. Mm -hmm. So okay. all of the lots that meet yeah. meet that criteria are in on the, on this map are shown in red. And there's a total of 355 of those lots, representing 16,588 acres. So if you were able to divide all of those lots at the 10 acre density, which the likelihood of being able to do that, given um, that you have to do this analysis to compare the lot size with surrounding properties, the likelihood of you being able, being able to justify getting out of 10 acres is very low, but worst case scenario, I mean, in terms of best, can I, best depending on your perspective, um, would be that we would have a maximum of uh, 1,448 new tax lots that could be potentially created through that approach. Um, so this would require that we, if we go down to the 10 acre lot size, it would require that we amend our comprehensive plan and our zoning district for, to allow for that higher density. Um, but the remainder of our rural use provisions that the county spent um, at least a few years developing and going through the process, the remainder of those provisions would remain as they are today. And uh, has the advantage of in the future, if property owners did not qualify through this um, analysis, that they could hire a soils consultant or they could um, go through the procedure that they do today or that they're allowed to go through today in order to get to rural use outside of this process. So those that's kind of the broad comparison of the two different uh, mapping exercises. Excuse me, what are the blue? Um, the blue are mostly um, private lands that fall outside of the criteria that I mentioned. So they're either class one through four soils, they have um, a higher forest productivity, or they're within deer and elk winter range. The green is uh, public lands. So I'm kind of is that a with that? You know, the, the red kind of scattered in and out of there. On what basis were those? smaller red sections decided that they didn't fit the criteria that all the rest of the blue So again, the red, the red are privately owned lands right. that are, are lower forest productivity. They are uh, poor soil types, so uh, not class one through four soil, and they're not within the deer and elk winter range areas. So that's why I'm, I don't understand why you'd have this one little isolated red surrounded by the blue, and for some reason that little section doesn't fall under the same criteria yeah. as the rest. A lot of it has to do with the way the, way the soils the soils are. So in, in, there, in the valleys a, you have better soils typically than up on the... Well I'm looking, I'm looking at an area where 
my family owns property and there are some small sections there that somehow don't, the criteria doesn't apply to those, but there are larger sections in that area where they do. I, I can't understand why that you got this section right here and right next door to that section, it doesn't, it, it no longer applies. I don't understand that. Well, it's just like you might have a neighbor that, that grows trees really well, and, but you can't grow anything on your land. It's, that's the way. I understand what you're that. saying. I, I it, uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. Are you? I don't know if you're reading the map correctly, though. So the red, the red are the ones that would potentially qualify. Right. So those are the ones that meet. <coughs> yeah, I understand okay. that. But gotcha. you know, there, you got a small red section, totally surrounded by blue, and for some reason that one little section there, the the rules don't apply to it. No, and that boggles my mind. No, it's actually just that the criteria that we developed for our rural use that's in existence today would apply those those properties meet that criteria. <laughs> yeah, but why doesn't the, the area right adjacent to that qualify? I mean, it, it doesn't it just make doesn't any sense. Have, it doesn't have the soil types like Craig was saying. So on you can draw map, a line, you can maps. draw a line right down here and from this over qualifies and from here over doesn't. I mean, it went, okay, so <laughs> you might, this is, this is something you, that might help you. Okay, so we're looking at the the tax lot area. So it's a irregular shape. Sometimes they're squares, sometimes they're irregular shape. And the the, the way that the, the mapping works is that is that you can determine within that, let's say that that tax lot is 20 acres. If over 10 of those acres are within a class one through four soil type, then it's out. If less than 10 of those 20 acres are um, outside of the class one through four, then it's in. And so that no, no, you more, if more. More, more sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's, what, that's why that you'll have, that's why you're seeing the pattern that you're seeing. It's just based on the tax lot. The tax lot is sort of like a cookie cutter. You know, if, if you um, use the cookie cutter, and you end up with 50 percent or more of these things that we're that we're trying to exclude, then you're you're out. If you're 50 percent or less, or less than 50 percent, you're. Out. I think we have cookie cutter government run by people that uh, are not elected; they're appointed by the governor, and so we're we have decisions made for us by people who don't represent us. We actually in this room we have government without representation, and we're basically the. the Local control, the local county commissioners should be deciding, along with the people, what the rules for land use and is. And you know, that will actually, that will actually happen. All this group yeah. is, is just an advisory well, yeah, group but to the S Jackson County SB County Commission. SB 100 was what got it started. And, and basically, they, also the people that lost their, their u highest use for the land were supposed to be compensated. The government broke its promise, didn't compensate the people for the use of its land. And uh, basically, it was taken away from the people. And when you have 10 faceless bureaucrats or whatever making the decisions from Multnomah County or Salem about the rest of Oregon, you end up with a state that's um, in a state of poverty. We're basically well, in, in we're losing our mineral, timber, and land use rights. That it makes the value of the land go down when the jobs disappear. So unless we get local control, from our commissioners, so if they make the bad decisions, we can fire them. We're not going to solve this problem. Right. Actually, it's interesting that you say that because this project really is giving Jackson, Josephine, and Douglas counties the ability to do something a little bit different. Yeah, than but it's a little bit of a bone. It's like throwing a little but bone it's in all, there. But I, it's, it's I, all we can yeah, do at this well, point. Yeah, I've always there's something that's, missing that's from all. yeah. There's something missing from this room. I know that <laughs> I decided to bring one with. Me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I want to tell you my story, and it, it just indulge me for two minutes. My family uh, have owned timberland since 1970. In 1982, my mom was killed in an accident. My brother and I inherited the land, but we're locked out of the land. We we can only build one home on 93 acres. Because my brother and I own the land unequally, it does no use for me to develop half that property and and have, you know, it's we each want to have a house on that property, but we're not able to do that. 
And even if we put a house up there, the process, two houses up there, that they make the process so expensive and so many hoops that you have to jump through. If we had local commissioners in the planning, making the planning decisions, at least the public, when they didn't like a decision, could fire the commissioner and vote the next person in. So we're not, we're basically getting, getting cut off. Well, right now, with this project, like I said, what we're trying to do from a staff perspective is provide information to this technical advisory committee that will eventually provide information to the Jackson County Planning Commission who will provide information to our board of commissioners. And that's what this project can do right now. So there's a website, right? It might be, it might be who of you to, to just look at the website, to look at the history of kind of how this started. I don't really want to go into mm -hmm. it right now. But basically, it started from local legislature. Well, it was the, there's a book called the LCDC. We didn't see it. It went behind um, uh, national government getting SB 100 work into the well, system. The website, at least, isn't going to get back up that far. Yeah. But you might, I think it was it Southern Oregon Regional Pilot dot org. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you can just Google Southern Oregon Regional Pilot Project just to get a little bit more information on the background, kind of bring you up to speed so that. Sure. Um, so we don't have to go through, you know, and, and talk about as much history. Not that that's well, the history thing, is, but is, the purpose is, of this meeting is more specific. The basis of it is we're getting government control without representation is what it is. It's basically a faceless bureaucrat making decisions for us that we cannot unelect. Hey, Kelly, can I, can I answer, respond to his question about, you know, your question about the parcels? And I understand, Craig, and I appreciate it. it was, it's the way I, it's like a formula. It's like this mathematical formula where it, it analyzes each parcel based on the existing laws for, you know, is this resource land or not? And so the analysis was done on all the private properties and it's just mathematical. It pops up. Well, it's a matter of practical experience. Uh, my family tried to get a site approval on a piece of property. It was zoned exclusive uh, or woodland resource. And my mom jumped through all sorts of hoops, paid all kinds of money, soils analysis, the whole nine yards to prove that it wasn't a uh, woodland resource. And, but she was still denied the site approval. Right. And then it was zoned exclusive farmland. And for crying out loud, it's on a hillside. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just based on the you know, and then there, there are <coughs> red spots there that are adjacent to that parcel of property that somehow they have qualified well, that uh, you know rural resident that 80 acres yeah forget it that, well, that I know but I just qualified. like it's based on and I'm not saying that I mean like Joel was talking about Craig is that <clears throat> this these parcels are just based on the map soils and I'm not saying that they're mapped correctly and you know a lot of times <laughs> you get a consultant that comes in and says no it's different but on the map soils in the wildlife habitat, these are the parcels We're that show up. We're talking about people's lives and money and fortunes mm -hmm. that are arbitrarily being uh, negated because of uh, you know, some computer program or analysis of soils and say, well, this is the blanket uh, application. Right, but you understand the framework we're working in. And I understand your point and everyone's point, but you know, we have the state laws and the administrative rules and we're we're working within that framework to try to loosen up some development for people. And that's the point of this whole process. That's, that's and it's, I mean, I'm, am I a faceless bureaucrat? No, I have a job, I work, I don't work for the government. But you make decisions for other people. If you're well, a bureaucrat, I'm, you're making decisions for us, maybe when you're in Salem, well, you have no idea what we're going to do here. I'm not in Salem. I'm, it I'm doesn't a, matter, it doesn't matter. The principle <laughs> is one person in the state making decisions for people, other counties in the in the local areas here, we have our own needs in our own economy. And the fact that where it used to be before SB 100 was the commissioners would decide land use planning was a local issue. It was easily understood by the locals. And if a local person didn't like, the public didn't like what that local person voted for, the next election they were voted out. Right. So and the change was more fluid. I understand. But, yeah. we're, but we're working within, I'm working within the framework of today. Yeah, right? you are. I am. Yeah, you I mean, are. I am. I mean, okay. Whatever and so, it means. Well, I, it means, you know. <laughs> I know, and we're, and this group is trying, and it's not just the 
conservatives, but you know, thousand friends is here. Thousand fiends. It's but I mean, you guys. I'm just telling you, the whole project of this is to relax some restrictions, to allow some development potential where it doesn't exist. It, it's LCDC finally recognizing that they've heard for so many years that conditions in Jackson and Josephine and Douglas County are different than what they are in Lane Correct. and Multnomah County. But and so they have, they have said, okay, we've heard this for years, we've heard this for years, why don't you, here's, here's a grant, here's some money to try and show us the differences. And that's what brought this group together. But, so why, after 40 years, that they finally decided this? Why, why I don't they, have any why control over well, why can they do it sooner? I mean, why can't a I, local I, government can represent us and they know what's going on in their own backyard? They can see what's going on with the public. They see their faces. But a, a bureaucracy doesn't see the faces of the public. We're Craig, just numbers. I, I appreciate what you're doing here. Um, what I'd like to have uh, understanding of, I live in the Central Point area, and uh, not on Beale Lane, I have some rural <coughs> property, and I see what happened across the railroad track from the high school. All that open land was developed. Um, in the future, how would this work with that kind of piece of property? That used to, that is fertile ground over there. Right. And I have fertile ground, and I'm a stone's throw away from the city limit. I can pick up a stone, and, and I could put six condominiums on my piece of property, blacktop it, and put six. So I am trying to figure out here. I have number one soil. I mean, it's beautiful, irrigated. How would that work? Let's get to something. Yeah. Okay. So. The, uh, the statewide planning goals uh, allow cities to expand over time, and cities have to justify that, that expansion based on projected population growth and other factors. And in your case, in the city of Central Point went through that, that process and expanded their urban growth boundary and included that area that you're referring to. And all of the cities in the Rogue Valley recently concluded a process along with the county and the state to look out beyond the 20 years, to look actually 50 years out, and they adopted urban reserves. So those are the areas outside of city limits that cities eventually expect to extend, expand their urban growth boundaries, and then eventually the cities will fill in those areas. All of that land that's in either the city, the urban growth boundary, the urban reserves, is outside of the scope of this study. Okay. So we're just looking at privately owned lands outside of all of those areas okay. that are zoned resource today that fall within the mapping criteria that I've described. Okay. And there's no way for us to look at every single tax lot in the county um, in, uh, with the kind of a detail that maybe some people would like. Um, we're, so we're, we're reliant on um, NRCS soils data that's that's digitally available to us and we're we're reliant on digital data in order to get this kind of um, map work done. That's the only way that we can accomplish it. So it's certainly not 100%. Um, no one's saying that this, it's it necessarily is 100% accurate. There's no way to, to do that electronically. Uh, but it's as close as we can do. That's the reason why I made the comment earlier that I'd like not to see the ability for an RU zone to go away if you didn't get included in this, because maybe by further analysis your ground would qualify, mm -hmm. and and that's why I want you know from my perspective for the rights of the private property owner to be able to accomplish what they'd like to do for their family goals mm -hmm. that all within the constraints of an overarching land use uh, obligation to the county that's legislatively <coughs> produced to give people more ability to do what they want to do on their lands if in fact you aren't what you're claimed to be or zoned to be. If you don't have land that is actually productive 
but you're zoned EFU and you're obligated under EFU zones for those certain types of activities, it'd be nice to be able to make some adjustments to that. I mean, I got a question. My brother's got 63 acres in prospect all around the extender land. He's got five foot on the stump timbers on his land. And he's excuse the farm is. Where are you going to farm 63 acres of timber? Well, how's that possible? And that's why there's a process set up for our use zoning to, to, to maybe get into a different category of classification well, zoning. Who's the one that the county made all these zonings in the first place? The county commissioners ultimately make the decisions on how to go about doing that. These of me having planning commissions that go through intense study to give them information so that they can make good qualified decisions about how they can expand things or provide for the local economy and for local citizens to do and use their lands the best and highest uh, enjoyment. Yeah. Well, there's always skeptics in every crowd, but the yes, point there is, is there's a process <laughs> that, you know, is in it's, it's placed upon us because we live in a state where we have these very complex land use laws. Right? And in order to deal with it legally, you have to go through, as as was previously stated, you got to go through the process to try to get through that and find those areas where you can make improvements for a more regional or local situation, which is why this was allowed or designated to be allowed to look at how we differ from other areas of the state and make more regional land use decisions down here. And again, it's for a broader capability for private land use holders as opposed to more restriction. That's the whole idea. Right. And the people that you can fire, these commissioners, and we've got two new ones coming on board, both of whom have no direct experience in land use issues whatsoever, they will benefit from quality information that gets um, well, people can't be trusted to know these things, can Well, these are public meetings, and like we're yeah. having today, you, the public has been invited to this meeting, or to these hearings, or whatever you want to define them as, these determinations for, not they're not hearings, that's true. It's, it's a technical advisory committee at the bequest of the elected officials, the committees, <coughs> to give them a good, a good body of information to help them make decisions that you can then decide down the road to elect or or not elect in the future in somebody sense, that didn't vote the direction you wanted them. Even if you don't elect them, the state rules still are take precedent over the county. And so that's the problem. They you, got two, you got two chiefs on a ship or whatever trying to run the ship. And it's like going through this ma matrix of rules and regulations. That's I don't see how the commissioners could do it. It really has to go back to local control because it's simple. The people understand it, and the commissioners can understand that, it. And that's one of the points of this whole process yeah. is to try to give our commissioners more local authority to do some things here right. with respect to land use. But they still that, have to that go. The state will let go. They still have to go to the state and ask permission. That's the problem. The, yeah. state, the state is basically should stay out of the picture and allow local government to determine, local people to determine what the highest use for their land for the county. And uh, obviously, they're not going to do something foolish, I don't believe, where people will keep them from doing that. Because the people, the public, I think, know what's best for their own land. Well, yeah. Yeah. in one respect, you're right. But the yeah. people have different opinions. Well, of course they do. And, and, but, so, and then you have elections and people make laws. But the property yeah, owner, the property owner is the rules. ultimate stakeholder. They're the ultimate stakeholder in this. Uh, so this, that's the way I see it. Hey, how many tax lots did you say that would be potentially uh, or, or, uh, candidate lands? If that's what you're calling them for that RU, the last this last 355. Year. So there's less tax lots eligible, but more, there's no they're bigger way. tax lots. Well, yeah, we're also looking at all of, assuming that all of them go to attending comments, which is not, you know, it's not realistic, but we did that for, to, to, keep, to keep the comparison to apples and apples, we did it that way, because even with the regional approach, when it's 10 acres or 20 acres or 40 acres, it's still looking at, that's, 
um, that's the minimum because there are citing criteria that would be applied. So it, it, we were trying to keep it, like I said, to kind of comparison to apples and apples. So let me ask you a question. If it went to the 10 acre commercialization size and we got away from RU, would anybody have to qualify by virtue of the mean size of parcels around them? Or is it automatically you can have 10 acres? If they qualify, if, if they were included in this, am I missing that? <coughs> well, you said if we went if we went to this and then we didn't have our use zoning anymore. Oh, the I was asking about the yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Um, I'm actually going to probably surprise Joel and agree with him. I wouldn't like to see the RU go ability to go away later either, because I mean it's clear. Bring and catch everything in this process, and we've been hearing for years and years that there's errors, so there should be a way to correct that if that's possible. Um, I'm, I found out about the regional news at the, at the LCBC meeting last month, so I might have had a slight leg up over some of this committee. I'm really surprised to hear that this is even being, that one even being considered anymore after in May you told us that that was politically unacceptable to the commissioners and they weren't going to go that way. So somewhere... Which, which one? The, the regional approach? The, the one with the rings. It's you mapped different though than what they had mapped. Today. This, that, this yeah. is a slight variation to that. Yeah, and the, the main difference is the force capacity. The well, well, no. the rings, they didn't have the buffers on the last... Last time we met at the TAC, correct me if I'm wrong, it was you were still... Had, you had your own criteria established. Just three from rooms, whether you're in a uh, buffer or that, that was this, thing. though. That was this. That wasn't that. In, in May, you had mapped the regional version and said the commissioners. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. The commissioners okay. didn't like that approach, so you were developing this approach, which is more similar to the one on the left. So maybe the regional approach is. Has has changed. Changed. Well, it has a little bit, but the main difference is, from my understanding, talking with Cubic, is that it's the force capacity. No, that's oh, the, the rural big, residential land. Other, right. and the rural residential They had buffered the right. rural residential land. Right. right. That was the, I mean, in my opinion, that was probably, okay. for us, that was the main difference. For well, Douglas County, it's probably using the, the um, it, comprehensive it, it, plan for a state it, designation. It, 85 or whatever it is. So, that, the other problem with that one, though, is, again, for years we've been hearing that there's land all over the county that's been miszoned, and if that really is the case, then that should be fixed. That one eliminates from even consideration anything outside of three miles away from all of the cities. So, I mean, if we're really fixing this problem, which is what the executive order is supposed to be about, not about creating home sites, it seems like we should be looking at the other um, version, the one on the left over there. I'm Without the restriction. Pardon me? Without the limitation. Is Without the limitation to, to within three miles mm -hmm. of the city. Right. The, the issue with that one, though, now is in July, you presented us with this that showed there was about 64, 6,500 acres potential, and now you're saying that there's uh, 16,000. So what's the difference between what you presented in July and that map, which has 16,000 acres on it? So I think the main difference is I didn't do any of the, um, I took properties that are within the floodway, but there are properties that are outside of a mile of a fire district, and properties that are outside of a mile from a paved road now that are on this map. That's that's the main difference. So we we never we never came to a decision about well, about those two factors, <coughs> the, the carrying capacity issues. So this is again this is um, the first step before we get to the carrying capacity, and so this this is, represents the maximum of of lots, with the exception of the ones that are in the floodway. Okay. So I guess I have one other. Thing to bring up, which is talking about taking this the rural use down to 10 acres. Um, when the rural use zone was created, that was the original proposal. And there were appeals, including by cities in the valley, um, and that was remanded. And the county made the decision to go to 20 acres instead of 10. So now we're talking about maybe changing that. 
I think we're talking about looking at changing it, yes. I mean, because I think it had been the board's desire to um, reduce that minimum lot size. Um, like you said, it was a compromise at that time. I think opening up that dialogue, and not to say that we may be able to get there, but at least opening up that dialogue, I think, would be um, good. So would it still be 40, 30, 20, and then 10, with some specific criteria about 10s? Or would, I wouldn't like to see 40, 30, 20 go away, this is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You added, 10 was added in, well, that's the feedback uh, by its own. That, that, that's that would be fine at, if it's for. got its own set, set of criteria, mm -hmm. and I think that would be good. But on this model, what you have up there, it's you. It just depends on where you are in the, the lines, right? Isn't that what you're saying? That if you're in the red, it's ten. If you're in the yellow, it's twenty, and right. then blue is forty. Yeah, it's not based on surrounding. Yeah, it's just so there it's is no based, criteria. I mean, well, it's just it's based on proximity to the just a locational criteria. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah that's which that's simplifies it. Yeah. Instead of trying to figure out the densities and all that sort of stuff. But the what Greg is saying, and I wasn't involved in the RU, is I didn't know there was a big issue about the ten acre size. I mean, yeah. There so there was a few. It's there something there to think about. I think yeah. the cl the clustering provisions is important. <laughs> I mean, it serves yeah. a purpose. It's incentivizing yeah. clustering. Of, re of development in rural areas, which is good from a forest standpoint, from a habitat standpoint. So I think that ought to be included okay. in in the discussion. And that could be part of the criteria if you go if you meet a 10 acre uh, mean size, or if you meet whatever criteria you could make a 10 acre RU out of. You do you don't have cluster, but you could still but if you, if you, you only still need clustering if you 20. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. clustering is important. Okay. Okay. I mean, no, I and I mean, I would, Josh, Greg. I mean, I'm thinking, what's with the 15 acre clustering size? I mean, why can't you go down to two or five on your clustering? Well, no, you. you I, I mean, if I, I'm I, at two, yeah, I'm you're, you're talking about the average. average. Yeah. I mean, that. I mean, definitely. So you'll have a two acre. Yeah. I mean, lot. Um, right, but, but you. It'll be based on my 10 acre, 20 acre, or 40 acre size. Yeah, overall, I mean, well, that's you know, yeah, clustering. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Under clustering, if you had 45 acres, a parcel 45 acres, just so everybody understands, if you had a 45 acre parcel and you met the 20 mean size, but because we have 45 acres, you can cluster if you, and we get one additional dwelling. If you put two of those dwellings on two acre parcels and left the other donor parcel, or made three parcels out of 45, <coughs> Wait, let me, let me see if I'm following you. I mean, so I'm going to go 100 acre parcel, okay? And let's say it's a, I'm in a 10 acre, Greg, I'm just saying, for example, 10 acre. <laughs> <laughs> so I could, I could do, under the comp plan, I did a zone change, I could do 10 parcels under the RU10. Then I instead. Which doesn't exist today. This is all I'm, 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 Yeah, so I'm with you. I get it. So. Then I can, instead of doing 10 10 acre parcels, I can do uh, nine, oh my math isn't gonna screw up, two acre or five acre parcels clustered together, and then I'll have a parent parcel that will be the remainder. And that's what I'm, I mean, I'm not talking about any sort of density bonus or anything like that, I'm just talking straight up right. clustering. Yeah, right. So yeah. those, because those parcels might you be more marketable. Oh, it's easier to develop. Yeah. More yeah. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. not different than what well, we're well, saying well, here. Well, so well, well, you can parcel, so long as they're at least, as I recall, a minimum of two acres. Yeah, it's got to be two, over two, like, two acres over, yeah. right? Because yeah. of the urban exactly. rule or something. See, in the measure 49, it's all two acres, right? right. You go two or five, and so. So I have down clustering in order to do that. And again, if we can go to 10, let's not lose 40, 30. Right, no, and I got that too. We are. This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you make the sausage in the last one. Yeah. So there's a couple things I just wanted to point out on this. On the regional methodology, we, we had um, about 400, about 500 tax lots total that were eligible and so just looking at the Lincoln Piners which is a rural community um, that actually includes a lot of 
a lot of those properties, a lot of the acreage. And you know, this might be something just to, as a case study to consider. There's not really um, good fire service here. There's not, a, there's not a fire district. There's very poor transportation. And these are kinds of issues that we have to look at when we capacity <coughs> studies. Um, when we're comparing these two different mapping approaches, just consider that uh, a lot of a lot of the properties that are eligible under the regional approach are in areas where many of those properties might fall out under a, a more um, you know more scrutiny when you look at when you're considering roads and, and other factors that are going to be involved in developing those properties. Craig, can I ask a question about that? So if I go to a comp plan, say you just included all of them based on what you have there, and I get my comp plan designation to residential use, whatever you call it, when, but when I go to a zone change, when I go to make my zone change, I have all those standards and criteria I have to comply with concerning public facilities, you know, there, I think there's some even fire hazard stuff. and. I mean, isn't that the filter that would take care of that? No. Well, yeah. If Why? Because the executive order requires a carrying capacity analysis, to, and that has to be done up front. I hate the carrying capacity. Well, some so of it's going to be the same, and um, I mean, yeah, it is going to be the same criteria. We're yeah. just going to apply it front so that property owners don't get a false idea that maybe they can do something and then later be told not to. Right. It's going to I mean, be up front with everybody so everybody's clear. Yes, you qualify, or you don't. Okay. The fire district was a big component, at least you know, in, in the thinking about you know how you prevent forest fire. Right. If they're in a fire district, it's much more likely that someone's going to respond to a structure fire instead of ODF just responding to you know right. to put out right. a wildland fire. Oh, pardon me. Uh, what's this executive order you keep talking about? So the governor passed an executive order 1207 that allowed for this project basically allowed for a region, the region being Douglas, Josephine, and Jackson counties, to enter into a project to look at um, lands in the three counties that might not, might be able to be classified as something other than resource land, so farm or forest land, to allow for some development potential, residential development potential. And all three counties are working on this project. It's a, like I said, it's a regional project. Um, and so Douglas is working on it, just like we are in Josephine County. So that's when we talk about the executive order. And the executive order kind of spells out what we can do in this project. And it, spell, it spells out what we have to do. And one of the things that we have to do is when we're looking at these lands, we have to look at what's called carrying capacity analysis. So it's the ability for you know fire danger to be mitigated or um, reduced. It's looking at transportation. It's, there's a whole bunch of factors that we have to look at, as, as, and it's required by the executive order, and it's required to be done in the project prior to these lands being designated. So they give you the criteria as well. I know they just give you the issues you have to look at. So where does the criteria come? So the criteria we have, well, we would have to, with our current rural use designation, we actually have criteria. For example, one of the criteria is to get your land, if your land, you can show that it's not resource land, you also have to be within a fire district or you have to be able to be annexed into a fire district because we have to be able to mitigate that, that we have to be able to make a finding that we can mitigate that fire danger. So that's a criteria. Well, where does it come from? Where does it come from as criteria? Okay. Generally, generally speaking, you look at the soil type. If it's class one through four, but who tells you in Oregon? Um, who tells you? There's an agency. Look. There's a federal agency called National Natural Resources. So this is Society. coming from the government, from the, the federal government. This criteria. No. This group is developing potentially developing criteria for this. The map that's up on the screen right now. The other map that they're talking about, the rural use aspect, yeah. that was stuff that was decided on at the local level. The Board of 
commissioners uh, ad adopted that criteria into their comprehensive plan. So, so one's already established, and that was done through a public, local public process. The other one is what we're currently discussing today, and that's really the, the, um, the direction given to this technical advisory group, okay. is to, to help work through that criteria, because um, the board, you know, doesn't want to have to go through every detail. That's why they typically rely on groups like this to kind of provide them with some information. And we've been meeting for a year and a half or so to, to kind of walk through a lot of that. The so would you say you're modifying the criteria or adding new criteria to the existing criteria? How would you how would you define this? Well, one is one is established criteria, so we're not that's not being proposed to be changed. This criteria is worth establishing it right now based on the direction provided by and through the executive order. Okay. So that provides kind of general parameters, things you have to look at, and then that, that's what this group is really tasked with, is to, to focus on refining that. And, you, and uh, the stakeholders <coughs> are, the people that are in this room should be considered stakeholders in determining that criteria. Definitely, in, in the, the executive order, and then there's a grant agreement, because there's grant funding that's going to the counties to do this work, to pay for staff time to do this work. That, um, that specifies that there needs to be public processes involved. So there's a public hearing that'll take place once the technical advisory committee gets to a level that, we, that the group feels comfortable you know, providing some direction to the board, then the board actually will hold, and the planning commission will hold public meetings and hearings on that. How about if the people feel their rights and privileges aren't being addressed in this criteria? That you're then there are, there'll be ample opportunity for you to provide that information to both the Jackson County Planning Commission and the Jackson County Board of Commissioners because they'll hold public hearings. So it'll be step by step process allowing this kind of. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And two of the counties have to go together. Right. Right. So that's right. Right. Not that, not if the you go one, with the rural use one here, well, that's it doesn't true. matter. Okay. Oh, right. But yeah. for the regional approach, if right. you want to do, if we go with the regional approach, then two counties have to participate in that regional that's approach. Right. Right. So. I think the whole Which, precedent is wrong, though, myself. Top-down ordering of, of criteria and establishing criteria, I think it's, I, I, I don't agree with that. You know, at this point, we have an executive order. We can participate in this project. The board has decided that they want us to participate. And the way that we're participating is the board appointed this technical advisory committee to go through this process. And if you don't mind me saying, I think the governor has forgotten this. <laughs> so question on, so I guess to Greg and Josh. So with the approach with the rings there, that's going to be narrowed further, is that, or is based on the carrying capacity? Both of them are going to be narrowed further. We mean both of them. Either, either way it could go, either approach. It's going to be narrowed, like on the fire and <coughs> yeah. access. Yeah. So or, the numbers that you guys have given us so far are the theoretical maximum. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Okay. Because we haven't done the carrying capacity right. piece right. yet. Right. Got it. And I mean, in one sense, we've done one piece of the carrying capacity, and that's looking at goal five. By us taking out the areas in the floodway and the um, especially sensitive big game habitat, in one sense, that's starting to do the right. carrying capacity. But because our big game habitat is so vast, we didn't want to do our maps not including that at the get-go because it would have been, it would have very much misrepresented what actually can be done in those areas. So we've taken, at least we've done that piece, but in terms of fire or transportation, we haven't done that piece yet. And so we need to come up or agree on what those kind of parameters are gonna be, correct? What's, how are we gonna limit it further? With to meet the carrying capacity? The, to meet the carrying capacity, right, or not? I think that the task right now before us, Dan, is to figure out which approach is kind of the preferred <coughs> approach. Um, one, you know, is the Jackson County kind of going on its own approach, which is using what's existing in the rural use, um, and maybe making it 
change what they're saying to lower the minimum lot size. Mm -hmm. The other approach, the one that's on the screen, is the approach that takes at least two of the three counties to come to terms on. So that's the approach that's a bit more uncertain because the three, with Jackson and Josephine and Douglas counties, there, I mean, I'm attending all the different meetings, right. you know, so I can see kind of how, in, in Kelly's meeting with the planning director, she can see how they're, they're varying, but it's a pretty drastic chain, you know, difference between Jackson County's approach and Douglas County's approach. And then Josephine County, um, barely has the planning staff to kind of pull itself together, so they haven't really been able, even with grant funding, to devote much time to this. So they're kind of, without, without a better way to put it, they're kind of being dragged along through this process a little bit. So it takes at least two of three counties to come together to make this happen. Um, so I'm not advocating to say that we should go the Jackson County approach, but just to point out that this has, a, a, I think, some more difficulties um, and um, more uncertainties going this approach than going with, with just the Jackson County approach. I would, okay. I would agree with that, and I'd also say that this approach, being the regional one, doesn't address the stated purpose for the project or the long-time mantra we've been hearing all these years about large pieces of Jackson County in the south. The other one is looking at answering, the regional one is looking at answering that question. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm totally confused. I thought that was our approach. <laughs> so that's the regional one. That's okay, region. and then ours is the one. The other one. The it's one just where we land. just don't have the 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 lines and stuff going around. It's just it's just there. It's right. not based on that's, a buffer. This is Dan. This is basically creating a legislative process to get our new zoning. Right. I mean, it's more or less. We're we'll talking about changing right. some of it too. Right. Instead of. I mean, what we did here is maybe what we would have liked to have done when we did our review and we didn't have the resources right. to do it, which is kind of apply our RU criteria at that kind of big picture level right. to the county. It's like the Go 11 exception process. Yeah. You know, people can come in individually and say, right. well, my soils are bad, I should be able to connect to sewer. Instead of everyone having to prove that, the county went out and did an analysis like this, developed criteria said these parcels should be able to connect, you know, through, right, without going right. through that process very easily. So on this approach, let me get <clears throat> thousand friends. What's your you like this approach better? I think it answers the question and it answers the it answers the thing we've been hearing about for years that there's land all over the county that's been misowned. Right. Oh. If there really is that, let's look at it and fix it. Okay. And so we go with this approach, but we're gonna have to put parameters on this one for the carrying capacity also. Both either, of them. Either way. Either way. Yeah. And so this one is the same thing we're talking about, change comp plan. If a property owner wants to zone change they can, if they don't, they don't have to. Right. And just be business as usual. And on this one, it's more or less land than the other. It's less land, yes. less land. Right now, it's, it's more. Yes. It's more land. It's more land more right land now. Land. Okay. <laughs> and again, again, we're surprised to hear from me, but the schedule time for this conference is up. So okay. unfortunately, I need to close it. You may want to contact the host to see if you Bye. So, okay. okay, so then, <coughs> and then you're saying basically, with all due respect to Josephine County, mean that they can go, they may buy on this, they may not, it just... Well, this approach isn't a regional approach. So this is Jackson County saying we have an existing non-resource zone, which is okay. fairly unique. Um, <coughs> Josephine County has something, but... Not really. They usually just go from resource to rural residential five acre. Douglas County has some things, but not it doesn't work exactly. So this is Jackson County saying, and Jackson County was the only county to say that we think we have mapping errors. Okay. We want to we want to utilize some money, you know, through this project to look at that. So this would be Jackson County really saying we want to devote our attention here and do the carrying capacity stuff because the clock's ticking. Right. This, the money exactly. runs out in the, on this in July of 2015, which seems kind of like a long way away, but it's taken a long time to get to where we are now. Right. So it's Jackson County saying, we want to devote the rest of our time to this one or to this one, realizing that you know getting 
putting everything together is going to take probably that long. And so if we did this one, we you're saying we don't need the other two counties? Or we do? No. You don't? The, no. This, this, is the, this is the mapping error exercise. Okay, so that's different than, or right. same but different. Right. Like I said, we have, there's the regional approach that was, right. the, was that map right. on the right. Um, and then we have, so that was our task five work, and then task six, which is this mapping error piece that we could, we only Jackson County can view. Okay. It is resulting in the map you see on the left. And the caveat, again, being that the lands that we're showing on both maps at this point are the maximum amount, amount of right. land. That it is very, very likely that those lands will be um, reduced when we have to do the carrying capacity analysis. Right, which makes sense. I mean, I'm looking, you can look at the map and you see there's parcels that there's not a road nearby. And right, you and probably there's think, and yeah. probably outside of, and right. there's not a fire. So how much overlap? It looks like there's quite a bit of overlap between the maps. I mean, there's <coughs> some variations, but like we were just talking about Lincoln Planners area, right? I mean, there's, it's pretty consistent there. Did you look to see what kind of overlap? The map on the left has more land. Because it goes outside yeah. the three right. mile, three miles from those areas. Yeah, the only difference should be the, you know, the, the proximity to the urban growth boundaries or the rural communities. That's the only thing. right. We looked at like we looked at the Sam's Valley area, for example, just comparing um, the regional approach to just the um, Jackson County approach, and the lands were almost the same. Okay. It was slight variation, but it was very little. So we talked about having a blending of those two approaches, having the, the rings, but then also including, is that an option still, or is that? I don't know I mean, if that's I saw an, some I advantages and disadvantages to that. But. I don't know if that's an option. I don't know if we can have more than one way to get from resource to non-resource. Um, and I don't know if blending, I don't know how blending them would work, but we can certainly look at that. So, so look at it from like just a pragmatic, practical standpoint. I mean, like I said, that there's only six months or so left on this project, and that's, and it, I mean, it sounds like a lot, but it, you know, it's that's not a lot of time to do a lot of ana like further analysis and go through the carrying capacity stuff, which we really haven't even gotten to yet. Um, I think, even though it's possible or potentially possible to blend these things. I think the time's going to run out if you really start to try to to, to look at you know both variations. Honestly. Well, we almost I mean, just put the overlaying one on top of the other in a lot of sense, isn't it? Yeah, but one they're two totally, totally different things. One is a mapping error exercise. The one on the left is basically you know the thought is that there's a, there's land out there in this county and in three counties potentially that um, has been missown. It's been missown since land use came into effect. That's really set more more to address that issue. The one on the right is uh, a little bit of a bigger picture kind of thing. It's a little bit separate from that. And what that's saying is, are there areas out in this county um, through criteria that we develop right now that should be non-resource land? So, so it's a little bit different in the sense that the criteria is being established right now and it's a regional criteria. Um, so the, the one addresses an issue up front and the other one is, I think, a little bit bigger picture. The uh, definition uh, of a non-resource area is... What's what like we're just uh, talking about yeah, today. That's what we're trying to <laughs> well, we already have criteria for um, taking resource land and um, and having it in zone to non-resource land. We actually currently have criteria to do that. <coughs> that's the map on the left. And that's the, yeah. Mm -hmm. The, yeah. the red, the one, the, the one on the left. The, yeah, the one with the red. Okay, um, because I see the one on the right, um, according to uh, Table Rock Road, at the foot of the other Table Rock, is Thomas Lane. And it's, it's a pink designation. So the pink designation crate, isn't that the Jackson County Road? Non resource land is what the right. So that that pink <coughs> zoning designation is could be rural residential pride. Right. It, it could on promise. Okay. 
So it's already it's so developed. It means right. So it's 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 not, it is a non-resource piece already that's zoned our rural residential five. There are a number of smaller parcels there already. Yes. Yeah. Like we have a ten-acre parcel, yeah. and we've been told that we could cut it in five acres. If there are I would not zone with you or not zone forestry, then this doesn't look like there was at all. It won't affect the land. But I suppose if you have a parcel that's 10 acres or 5 acres that's still zoned DFU, this could change that. It could. It yeah. could possibly. But in terms of what Greg was saying, I think, is if your property is already zoned rural residential, right. this or something like that. This isn't. This project isn't going to change. <coughs> so at OSR, WR, right. or FR, right? Because now you couldn't build a dwelling on any one of those because they don't meet parcel size. But if this happened, that would open up the potential for development for that. Well, you can't. We can develop a dwelling outright. No, but you can go through a template test. You can go through a non-farm dwelling. There Nobody that I ever talked to that I don't use the word potential. <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Smart. Okay. Um, all right. Well, is there is there any more discussion? Uh, is there any more information that we can provide you on? So we are we are you asking us to choose between one or the other at this point, or what's you know, what are we doing? Well. I think that would be um, good in one sense because I what I want to do is um, take these maps and go let the board know I've given them I've been giving them updates on like a bi biweekly basis for when there's activity on the project and I'd like to just go talk to them about these maps and get some idea where the TAP technical advisory committee is coming from. Um, there are some things that you brought up that I would like us to look at. Like I would like us to look at the clustering to, to make sure of that. I would like us to look at if we, I think there is, like Craig said, there is a lot of overlap between the two maps in the sense that the a lot of the properties in the red are actually on the map to the right. Um, not all of them, but a great, a vast majority of them. And we can actually do some analysis to determine, Bill, if you'd like, what that kind of overlap looks like, it'd be pretty easy. Yeah, and I'm starting to see it now, but it's just, yeah. it, there's, yeah. there's a lot. Yeah. yeah, but we can, like I said, we can definitely do that analysis to kind of show you what that looks like. Um, and, but I think it would be, uh, it would be good if I could pass along some of your thoughts to the board. And if you can come to a consensus, that's fine. If you can't, you just want to give me your thoughts, that's fine too. I would like to take? ask if you could have a night a meeting because this is totally a deep subject and there are people that are obligated to stay. Can you have a, a night to explain all this? <coughs> um, you know, I can talk to our I can talk to our planning commission about that at I have no problem with night meetings. We usually go through a process of determining when everybody's available or the majority of everybody. <coughs> Most well, all of us, so again, are we're privately employed and we're out doing other things, and so we try to pick a time where we can have a majority together. I'm so wide open at any time. But there may be some overtime issues or something. No, the county's done it before. No, we've had with night meetings. With our problem no problem yeah. with, with bigger, bigger, you know, bigger projects, I think it's warranted. Yeah. 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 yeah, we did. So we can find a plan for The criteria for um, whether it's our children or not, you did not include the white women and buyers or Right, this is using the ORS 215 definition. Right. So, by definition, this is supposed to be deciding whether lands are resourced or not. Yeah. Essentially, giving a new way, theoretically, under goals and rules, but you're still bound by statutory definitions. And that's, that's a definition that's in the statute. Do you have any idea how much? I, I doubt very much would fall out, but do you know how much would be applied? The ORS 195. 195. I've done that. I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I, we, we did map the 195 as opposed to 215. As opposed to or with both? We did 
under ta under the um, task four when we had UR mapping, we mapped 195 because that was part of the requirement of um, the of the contract. Well, I mean, if we're truly looking at what's not resource land, and that's the definition of resource land that's in the statute, I think it should be included. I doubt it. I really doubt it's going to have much impact. But well, the, the main differences were the 195 definition includes viticultural areas, That's exactly. and then also land within the irrigation district. Those two, if I recall, were the biggest differences between the two, those two definitions. That's what defines resource land? Well, actually, the, there's, there's two, Greg was referring to statutory definitions of High value farmland, which is a, a separate category of farmland. And uh, there's a statute, ORS 195, that was used for measure 37 and 3749. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so it was it was specific to, to a certain application, and that's why we went with ORS 215, which is a more generally used statute that defines what high value farmland is. So um, it's kind of getting down into the weeds a little bit, but those are two definitions of what the state considers to be high value farmland that we have to consider in, in terms of the mapping that we do. So we have both of 10 acres, we have a woodland resource and exclusive farmland use, and it's neither. And so this end, we're right off of I-5, so it's not something new. This, this definitely needs to be looked at for remapping of the zoning. I thought we talked about that issue before. Did we talk about that issue? Yeah, I thought that we were, yeah, I'm just trying to remember, but because I think under that 195, I mean, that's pretty wide open. You know, it includes a lot of land. And I thought we could do the. I think the reason we use 215 is because. 195, even though we did map 195 for this project, 195 is used for, was used for Major 49. And we normally, in our comp plan and in our code, we use 215. Right. And so that's why we use 215. I, just wonder, I, mean, I was saying both, but I, I don't know how much in 195 is in 215 already. It's probably not. 195 includes everything that's in 215 and then adds to that. The viticultural area, whatever. The viticultural right. and. I, we don't need to get it. This is, okay. yeah. this is in the weeds. I'm just okay. pulling out my. Yeah, no, fine. Thank you. Can I, can I, ask I, would, I wish uh, before your next meeting you'd pass out a dictionary to all the people mm -hmm. that you know, you've got to understand what you're talking about. Or anything like <laughs> because you're, this is. Uh, you're talking in knowledge, and it's like another language. The common man doesn't even understand it. Yeah, we're the outsiders here. Yeah, we're not even talking to 215, the whatever. Yeah, we're basically the outsiders. These people inside this inner circle are already in the game, and we're kind of like left out of the loop. And that's how I felt, uh, you know, this, I found out about SP100. It's just basically leaving the people out of the equation. The bureaucrats know what's best, and the people don't. That's well, what they that, do. I think what the board did was they appointed a technical advisory committee that they believed had vast kind of different knowledge. Bringing yeah. a realtor, yeah. bringing a land use attorney, bringing you know an ag a person who did aggregate. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't those. replace representation because the local well, and people I know, know and, and the, what's the, best. At the end of the day. Yeah. The board of commissioners will take action or not take action. Well, on this. either and way, there they're overshadowed by the state. You know, I figured out why this isn't hanging in this room because I think you're all ashamed. You should all be ashamed. That's why this isn't hanging in this room. I brought one in. I didn't even think I'd have to pull it out of my jacket, but here it is. You're all ashamed of it. No, I don't. Sorry I don't to say. Actually, think that. I think this is just a meeting room. It's principle. Um, yeah. That's all. So, um, so if we could just, if I could kind of get some feedback because we're running out of time. Um, 
other than the feedback that I've already received, but kind of your take on these maps would be helpful. I'd like to ask one question about your analysis on pulling the floodway mm -hmm. parcels out. Would you look at what percentage of that particular parcel is in the floodway because, or was it all of it in the floodway? More than 50%. More than, okay, that's all. And there was only less than 10 property. Okay. I mean, I'm not talking about a lot of I just, want to, I just wanted to let you know that I did do a little bit of um, extra right. analysis. I appreciate that. That, that makes sense. Yeah, well, quick question. I, I get the feeling that if we go one route, we're in it by ourselves. If we go another route, I, I, I think in a Josephine County, and I have some interest in Josephine mm -hmm. County, we share a common boundary with Josephine mm -hmm. County, is Obviously, if it's two, at least two have to join, and, and it doesn't make sense for us to join with Douglas County. Um, and you've been meeting with Josephine County a little bit. Are, are, are they kind of acting like they no. don't want to be involved? No, or not I, at all. I just not at all. I think what Josh was saying was not that they don't want to be involved because they, they do. They just can't. Or they, they what is and they're they have limited staff. In fact, they're using they're using Craig to do their mapping for them. But don't get me wrong, they're still participating in the project and they're still moving forward. So while Josh, I think Josh was kind of just talking about their staffing levels, sure. no, I and, and that's all, because I've been meeting with their planning director and the planning director of Douglas County, and both of those counties are supportive <coughs> of this project. Now what phone number can other people call? Oh, certainly. Um, it's on the agenda. Yeah. It's on the agenda. Yeah. And if you get an agenda, here's a link. Then it has my direct line on it. So here, would you like an agenda? Here, right? Yeah. There's more agendas at the front. No if anyone would like one, and there's also another handout. Yeah, so if anyone has any thoughts or questions and wants to call me, please give me a call. Um, and if your questions are too technical, I'll ask Craig to talk to you. But um, so any, like I said, any any feedback? It's is the question you're asking would we prefer one method over the other or some more specifics? I think um, if you have anything more specific, that's fine. Um, you know, I don't know that we necessarily came here to present them as an either or, frankly. Um, but if you do have a preference, uh, I think that would be, like I said, I think that would be helpful. I think on my, I mean, looking at it, I like the, the one that represents the RU better, although I think it would be helpful to see exactly how much overlap, well, number mm -hmm. one, and I'd also like to, the, the Josephine Jackson County thing kind of uh, raises a little bit of a, concern with me as far as if we go with the RU designation that, that we're on our own and if there's a chance to have another county solve its problems mm -hmm. along with us, I think that would be a benefit rather than a... Okay. okay. <coughs> Can I address the overlap issue real quickly? If it's the, the maps actually should be identical and here's the exceptions. Exceptions are I did take out a few properties that were in the floodway for the map that shows the red. Um, that's negligible amount of acreage. Um, the main difference is that the regional approach uses these, is constrained by these um, three rings. So the other one is not constrained by those three rings. And the only other difference is um, the regional approach also includes tax lots um, less than 10 acres. I didn't, I didn't exclude tax lots that are under, under 10 acres. Whereas the, 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 um, the rural use approach uses 10 acres as a cutoff. Otherwise, the, the properties are the same. The ones within the three miles. Within. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Right. The end, but the re, but the rural use one adds more. Right. Well, I'm just going to voice my opinion. I still don't think we have enough properties that are marginal resource lands included. But that's been my position from the beginning. Right. And we know that I'll restate it. 
And I have one question. If we went the regional approach, would that create another government entity or would that give us more power with the state? I mean, it's just that's just a planning process. It wouldn't create another um, entity. Uh, it would still go through the planning commission and go to the board just like county. Right, mm -hmm. just like it is now okay. with land. So the process, so the governing bodies and their um, recommending bodies, the planning commission and the board of commissioners, that would change. So I don't see what the regional approach, I don't understand even why we're considering that other than. It's because currently there are things that you cannot do. That right. if we could get through this, you would meet a threshold where you could Right. Potentially do what you might like uh, to do. That, that I understand. It's, we can't do that today. We so can't we're do trying that. to get there. And and the the real difference between the two is the three mile region. Then. The the re mile. The, yeah. That is primarily yeah. the real difference. Yeah, I mean, the real right. difference is that the <coughs> regional approach has these concentric circles, concentric rings, um, and the other one doesn't. Yeah. But I don't see the reason that the regional approach has to include two counties. I, I mean, that, I'm not understanding oh. that. The executive order required that for anything to go forward that was regional, two counties had to participate, okay. a minimum of two. Okay. So two counties have to participate to move through a regional approach. And if, they, two. if two counties agreed, then they would be bound by that basically forever of it. Well, I think if they adopted it, they would. And they, they wouldn't be bound by it forever because land use is fluid. Right. But but if they adopt it, then they're adopting For it. For the and purpose they would of this it. plan, they would adopt it as long as the plan was in effect. Right. Okay. By the way, anybody can access 215, 195, or anything else either through the county website or through the state website, and you can kind of do your own research and um, you know, kind of backgrounding. Certainly every citizen is entitled and should be doing that all the time because that's how you can talk to your elected officials and, and raise issues. Can I ask, Kelly? If the first, uh, the regional requires a new comprehensive plan, You're rewriting the comprehensive plan section, all right? Do the section. Yeah, and the, as opposed to the rural use methodology of just amending it, would the rewriting of the comprehensive plan have to be completed before the process could begin. I because I, I assume that be a property, very long process before a property owner could yeah, use the process. Yes, yes, because it would have to be adopted to be and that to be could be years. It, it takes it takes a little while for uh, <laughs> things to get moved through the process. Um, because you know the public to allow for public involvement and to, to do those things. There is a process through the planning commission where it holds public hearings and the board they would hold public hearings as well. So, um, but in the answer, short answer to your question, Kathleen, yes, for a property owner to be able to avail themselves of, of either of this, of the regional approach, um, yes, a conference plan and that would need to be adopted by the board. So I think I've already said this, but just to be clear, um, I. My, my opinion, the regional approach doesn't address the problem that we're supposed to be addressing. But the rural use one takes advantage of something Jackson County already has in place and makes it easier to do. And I'd argue that it comes closer to the purpose, which is supposed to be to identifying this zone land and get that corrected. Um, I, I, th I think one other thing that interests me that Josephine County did that I haven't seen the other two counties do yet is Josephine County did an analysis of the um, capacity of the existing non-resource lands for developing the county for development for the total number of units that were possible. Um, and we asked about that here a year and a half ago. and I. I don't think we've seen that here yet. Um, Are you talking about the analysis that Josephine County did to kind of identify the vacant, the 
current right. vacant land that had development potential yes. currently. Someone could walk into right. Josephine County today. And, today and do a site plan right. and get a building permit. Right. And that was that was quite a few acres. I remember that. Yeah, it was that. like a 50 year supply given the population like regression. And and Josephine County has a lot of reception there. Yeah, very the issue there, I mean, you know, the prob problem statement for this project, you know, is the one that was eventually in the case of Jack Postman House, flooding with thousands of lots could hurt the, the property owners that currently have that ability. So it's a piece of information that might be. I thought we had looked at that, and I'm not sure we came up with the number. I don't Greg, but we but we did the mapping. <coughs> I think similar, but I'll see. Let me see about that. That's just a, that's just okay. the information that I hope we can. Okay. Well, okay. We map the exception in there, or you map in its own rural residential, and and based on criteria that we had for considering what what was vacant and what wasn't, mm -hmm. we map that. We, one of the points of looking at the divisibility potential, uh, which on it, there's not there's not a lot of RR10 that's 20 acres or more that can be divided. There's, there's not a lot of land like that. There may not be. Just in case of just in the kind of areas. Yeah. So that, it, that, I just think that's just piece of useful information okay. before. Okay. You know, and it may, it may turn out there's more. Hey, okay. Hey, I got a question. Just on that one, what was it someone asked already that I forgot? What was the pink on the one that's on the screen? That's um, non 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 already non -resource. So it's already. It's so like it's it's exactly like AR. I mean, it's AR. I mean, I'm looking at Panthers property. That's all pink and it's AR. Is that non resource? Oh, that's it. That's fantastic. Well, I, I only mapped the one that was on Forest land or agricultural land okay. for resource land. <coughs> I didn't map. I didn't AR. map AR as resource land. Huh. Okay. And um, so if we went with the left, I'm calling the left and the right. The okay. left. <coughs> I mean, we're we're stuck with our our current rules in terms of. Because you guys are saying you can only cluster down to 15 acres currently? Right now. Well, she said, they said that there's a possibility we could modify that. We could modify so that to make like real clustering. Because I, mean, I think clustering is such a benefit to I everybody. Agree. I'm going to no, look at that, Dan. I did, agree. Does, yeah. Do you know, does that require a legislative change, though? I don't, you know, I think <laughs> if it's, no, <laughs> if, it's, it's if it's not resource, I don't think it would. Okay. I mean, if it was... If it was zone, zone if it's, if it's RU, already, let's yeah, say, it, I don't think it would. No, so we would. So if that was the case, and we can do some research on that, and we can talk with yeah. Josh to see what we could do with that, and maybe we could look at re reducing the clustering down, because what you're doing is it's not it's not doing anything. It's actually, I think, benefiting both the property owners that are purchasing those properties and kind of general citizen because that there's that land that's still open right and there's that land that people have mm -hmm. that you know they can take care of yeah, yeah, so just be looking at averages yeah, yeah. Right. there's, there's, there's no averages. downside to clustering in no. my opinion right. just mm -hmm. in terms of so we, so we so we could look at that and then okay and then I kind of I kind of feel bad though like Bill is saying I mean, we're just if we go left we're just kind of saying we're not going to play ball with the other counties is that what we're doing or but that actually makes me worry because Douglas will get Josephine County, will they not? And then they'll move forward. And then it leaves Jackson County out of this. But we would still be able to do this, yeah. right? But the order was to come forward with two counties. So it wasn't Jackson, it was in Douglas and Josephine. And then it doesn't order the counties. It says basically that to have a project at the end, a viable project potentially establish rulemaking or, you know, to effectuate whatever comes about from this, that two of the three counties need to come forward. If none of them come forward, well, then that's okay. I mean, it's, it, you know, it doesn't mean that people, the two of them have to come forward. 
Is it, is it would possible? Be like proceeding with regional problem solving. Yeah. Basically. Is it possible that a regional solution would involve funds available from the state? That's what this project, this project is funded by the state. I, I see, I, I, I hear that, but if we adopted a regional solution including one or more counties, would then there be money available to do the rezoning? Is that? So the comprehensive plan doesn't, as far as I understand, this is a county driven pro project, right. but being at the state level and meeting with all the counties, it seems to me that it's consistent that the project, this project itself, would do, would change the comprehensive plan designation because it would be up to the individual property owners to change their zoning, and that's how it should be. Um, the individual property owners would then need to come forward and say, you know, we want to change our individual okay. zoning. I don't think that's something that the county nor the state would orchestrate or provide funds for. It would be up to the individual property owners to do that through the process that this established, which would be, which would be much more of a streamlined process. Because we, what, there may be people on this mask, for example, that don't want their zoning to be changed, right. that are enjoying the zoning that they have. And the, the tax benefits. Yeah, the tax so benefits. Of their zoning. So, they, so yeah. the, the, you know, so we're not advocating or recommending, this body right. is not advocating or recommending that we change the zoning map. It's just changing that, the ability for a property that's owner. That's a key point forward. where tax basis doesn't automatically change just because you qualify to change your zoning. Right. So if you want to keep quote unquote non-resource designated lands under a resource tax zone, that's your, still your choice. You just can't enter into further development of it until such date that you would decide to do that or your heirs. Yeah, if right. you had EFU land and you had built up taxes that you'd have to pay back and you didn't want to do that, then you could keep the EFU land. Right. Yeah, right. Because you have to pay back 10 years of taxes or something to change the designation. Well, well, no, I'm not sure. Is that a, that's not a requirement. No, I think that's a possibility certain, if someone yeah, does something in not the appropriate yeah. manner. <laughs> That'd be like if you created a non farm dwelling or something like that okay. and changed the zoning on a portion of your land. It's also not a given that Josephine County goes with Douglas. Um, there, I mean, I live there, I'm on their tack as well, and having, I mean, they haven't met in a year and a half, but having met with some of the staff and some of the commissioners there, um, their look at what they're doing there is fairly restrained. So I don't, I don't, I mean, other people might see it, and I'm certainly not speaking for them, but I, I don't see them necessarily jumping on the Douglas County bandwagon necessarily either. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Douglas was approaching them pretty aggressively. Well, I think we were all participating in this project, you know, to see that it, um, to see where it was going to go. I mean, um, and you know, it's, like I said, it's ultimately, it's, um, the board's decision on what they want to do. We'll also have legal counsel take a look at this idea of what happens if we, you know, we couldn't find anything in the statute or rule that said you you can have more than one way to get to um, a non-resource zoning designation, and we couldn't find anything that said you you can you can or you can't have one or more ways to get to a non-resource zoning designation. Right, and that's important, I think, because I lean to the left in the sense that, like Greg mentioned, is that we have all these lands that are outside, <clears throat> and then if you just do on the right, as proposed, where this is this is your R, you know, your, your R, you change, whatever, and if you're not in it, you're out, I mean, I don't know, it just doesn't seem right to me. This is the right side, and I think you said it, the, the right side is more restricted. Exactly, than the left. So exactly. The left, going with what Joel says, is we, we, we want to try and include this. If you go on the right, you actually could be taking property rights away from people, whereas on the left, you're not. You're, you're creating a, a development potential. potential, yes, and without adversely impacting and so so we need to we need to definitely ask that question too you know um, so so we can do that and I'll do that actually before you know I go to the board of commissioners and if 
it's different than what we're thinking that you know we can only have one. Um, then what I try to do is see if we can get the tap back together. Um, we do want, there is some haste in the fact that we do want to get the task five document done for, um, for the state. And, I, you know, maybe we go f forward with that task five document in the sense that if, um, if Jackson County or any of the counties for that matter wanted to pull back from the regional project or the regional component of it, we could at any time. There's nothing that says we can't. Um, so we may move forward. I, I, I don't know yet if we're going to move forward with the regional with the regional plan. Yeah. Putting my strict aggregate hat on, I, I think having it as a non-resource in here, whether or not we address it here or address it in a periodic review that we probably need to have at some time addressing aggregate properties. Uh, it definitely is a resource zone and should be mm -hmm. identified as a resource zone and then there somehow has to be, I, I know they're not probably not included on here, but I know of a lot of aggregate resource properties that have been depleted mm -hmm. that don't qualify for farm or forest because the topsoil's been removed mm -hmm. and, and I, I know of several of those locations that, that could be developed because well, well, isn't, that, isn't that a everyone? pretty property specific thing? Because I mean, you know, I see applications come across my desk from, you know, aggregate operations. There was one recently in Douglas County where, you know, it's been spent and they want to convert it to um, our part, part of an RV park and some other land. There's some ponds on there they want to preserve as ponds. Um, but there's a lot of I mean, because you're bringing in Dogami and you know other agencies and stuff, isn't that better done on a property by property basis, when the property owner, you know, knows that the resource is spent in you know having to develop what they want to do next with it, or is it something that a county could do on a bigger picture legislative process like this? I I say that you just throw it in. I mean, because on the AR zone, my understanding is when it's when it's done, it reverts back to the. Yeah, the underlying zone exactly. and if it was and I think they're all resource meaning it's I understand what you're saying Josh because we individual impacts but I'm thinking that if uh, mean Panther and I represent Panther it's but it's just I'm just bringing that up because I know the property in the mining area is really small and you have you know we're talking 1500 acres and the mining's on 30 and I'm thinking well, well why would they be excluded from this process you know and so I'm just thinking because it goes back to the underlying zone but it well, doesn't some get of the changed of some, some of the right? path of parcels are is on the FU also yeah yeah ready and not just the AR designation and the dogami permit probably exceeds the mining air acreage currently mining acreage yeah, but it's it's limited. Yeah, it is limited. And, by and so, what what's also happening with with Dogami and with county laws is you have to, you know reclamation is the last thing you do. It's the first thing. Yeah, right. And what's happening sure. is you have to know what flexibility you have. Right. And and if that becomes a you know permitting a new site, you know it would help to know what flexibility you would have after the site's been completely mined yeah, as to what type of in use it is. So I think there's a couple things here. I mean, I think whether or not it's a good thing to do, you know, on a county-wide basis or an individual property owner basis, but then looking at it from this project standpoint, I don't, I try to look at the, the executive order again while you're talking, but I don't think that there's, I think the focus from the executive order it's and farm, through the, yeah, the grant true. was farm and forest yeah. for this mm -hmm. project. So I don't really think there's a way to bring in the aggregate stuff here. And I mean, then the, 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 the underlying zone is, of a lot of these aggregate properties is farm and forest. I, I guess right. what, what raised my point is when I saw all that Panther property zone non resource. It should it that should yeah. be. Yeah. That's it. So that's not right. How I mean I think well, I've only got those two choices. You know, yeah. yeah. I, I yeah. could have and, been and a I'm not, category, I'm not being yeah. critical of you, Craig. I'm just saying that there's there's uh, you know, we're not dealing with a lot of parcels here and, and yeah. at some point the county has to address aggregate inventory and aggregate mm -hmm. 
uh, and it does overlap into a lot of things we're talking about. Okay. Where will all of this stand if this goes forward relative to appeal processes when somebody does decide to do their zone change and it meets the new category, if, assuming that this goes forward, we have these new categories, and then that private property owner wants to go ahead and go <coughs> forward with that, are they protected against frivolous appeal because it's already an allowed zone? No. I didn't think so. No. There's yeah. mean that's always that's that's, that's just the order. That's land use. But the, the purview of that but it's that, narrower. That decision would be much narrower. Yes. Right. I mean it would be like whether they're in a fire district. I mean that's pretty easy to <coughs> right. show or right. not. That's show. why you do the current I mean, so would be first. Yeah, that's limited, right. right. Yeah. But so, that, yeah. it gives you a lot more certain now. Yeah. Well, I right. wanted to ask the question so we've got to answer. No. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, no, I Right, and speaking for the land use attorney, uh, you know, it's the do, the process wouldn't change. The I think the criteria by which someone could appeal something would be narrower, and some of those and some of those are even standards. Is it in a fire district? Right, that's a standard. Yeah. Can it be annexed into a fire district? is not a standard, but you know what I mean? Because some of those may actually be able to be standards, which would be even harder to be able to, to appeal. So. Well, once it goes in front of the board, you have swayed the board whichever way. I've been to these board meetings, and if they've already gone over what was put before them, that's the way they're going to go. Well. The way the process works is the board, from a staff perspective, my job is just to provide them information. And that's what I'm doing with this group, and that's what they've asked this group to do, which is just provide information to them. That's our job, and the board gets to do what they do, which is make a decision. And that wouldn't be, like I said again, that won't be without a public process. There'll be numerous opportunities for the public to participate both at the Planning Commission and at the Board of Commissioners. Well, I was told if we didn't show up at this meeting, everything would go forward. Oh, okay, well. Right. You were misinformed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. We are just like, We don't even know what we're going to recommend yet, let alone what they're going to decide. Well, it's, I don't, like I said, I don't know where that information came from, but this group is just a, um, a group that's providing some technical assistance to staff so that we can provide some information to our planning commission and our board. Yeah, I was told we were going to make a national monument out of the table of rocks. Wow. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully where, that wasn't another meeting that you just missed by <laughs> sitting <laughs> <in> this one. <laughs> we, looked for, we looked for that meeting and I couldn't find a meeting oh, that, that, that that was going to yeah. occur at. So I. I, I don't know where that information came from. I think table right. rocks would make better rock quarry myself. <laughs> 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 yeah, um, table rocks is the I have some opposition. I, yeah, I live right at the base of table rocks. So I'd be the first to first. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you got something out of this paper. Yeah. Um, well, like I said, what we'll do is we'll kind of, I'll kind of ferret through the questions that you all have asked and kind of try to get, get some answers for you. And then um, I talk to our attorney, maybe get some additional legal assistance. Um, okay. Dan, maybe, um, <clears throat> on uh, determining this issue of having two ways to get to a rural, to, to a non resource zoning designation. Um, and then we'll go from there. Kelly, one question. Who appointed this board? The Board of Commissioners. The Board of Commissioners of the District. Yeah. And it, per the executive order, there, there, we all, well, we all agreed, the three counties all agreed that we would have a technical advisory committee, and they would be made up of these certain, of these certain um, people with certain, I guess, occupations, if you will, yeah. like having someone. Expertise. Right. Because, because that's what we need. We need, you know, we're doing all this analysis, and we need this technical expertise that will help us. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you all. Thank you.
Thank you all for. We'll just look to hear from another. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.